All right. So open your Bibles, if you have them, to Luke chapter 15. There's a couple things about this parable that stand out to me. One is it's probably based on one of Aesop's fables. I, if you remember a while back, I <clears throat> had preached on one of Jesus's parables that where he just quotes Aesop's fables, the, the uh, fisherman and his flute. And it's one of my favorite stories. It's just utterly ridiculous. And here, Jesus is in the temple and he's arguing with some very serious Pharisees. And so he doesn't tell them a children's tale. He adapts one of Aesop's fables and he gives it his own spin. In verse 11, it reads, a man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, father, give me the share of the estate that will belong to me. So he divided his assets between them. After a few days, the younger son gathered together all he had and left on a journey to a distant country. And there he squandered his wealth with a wild lifestyle. Now you may recognize already, this is basically the ant and the grasshopper. Then after he had spent everything, a severe famine took place in that country and he began to be in need. So he went and worked for one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. Now he was very hungry and he was longing to eat the carob pods the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. But when he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired workers have food enough to spare, but here I am dying from hunger. I will get up and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired workers. Now, <laughs> now, already we have the ending of the ant and the grasshopper. This is where it ends, right? The grasshopper goes to the ant, please share with me. The ant says, now you lazy grasshopper, you should have put away for this all along. You knew winter was coming. But Jesus turns that story on his head. He says, this isn't a society that values the that values money, that values just um, pull yourself up by your bootstraps capitalism. It's not that kind of society that Jesus is trying to create in his church. He's telling us this isn't about being the ants, even though, yeah, we do kind of want to be the ants and not the grasshopper, but we don't want to be the ants this way. The ants are a colony. They're, they're a worker society. And if you don't pull your weight, you get left out in the cold. That's not what we want to emulate. He says, we want to be a family, not a corporation. So in verse 20, it says, so he got up and went to his father, but while he was still a long way from home, his father saw him and his heart went out to him. Now think about this. If you were the father and your kid comes back after squandering all of your hard earned cash, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? How are you going to welcome this child home? Are you going to welcome this child home? Are you going to be setting boundaries? Are you going to be treating them any differently? Are you going to be an aunt? But while he was still a long way from home, his father saw him and his heart went out to him. He ran and hugged his son and kissed him. Then his son said to him, Father, 
I have sinned against heaven and against you. The son won't be dismayed. He knows he has to repent. Mm -hmm. And repentance is not just saying, by the way, I'm sorry. It's trying to make things right. And that's what the son does here. He knows he can't ever make things right. He can't repay what his father gave him and he lost. And he can't ask for more because he has everything that he was entitled to. It says, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, hurry, bring the best robe and put it on him. Why is the father reacting this way? Because he sees in his son that he has repented. Not only has he repented, but he considers that he has no value. He considers himself in those capitalist ant-like terms. He lost everything, so now he has no value. His father says, bring the best robe. Remind my son that he has value because he's my son. But that's not enough. He says, put a ring on his finger, finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let us eat and celebrate. Because this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Because now his son has come back home. His son knows his place in the world, and it's not based on what he can do, what he can produce. It's not based on how much he's worth. But here comes the ant in verse 25. Now his older son was in the field. As he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the slaves and asked what was happening. The slave replied, your brother has returned and your father has killed the fattened, the fattened calf because he got his son back safe and sound. But the older son became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and appealed to him. But he answered his father, look, these many years I have worked like a slave for you and I never disobeyed your commands, yet you never gave me even a goat so that I could celebrate with my friends. Now, isn't that valid? After all, the, the other son is coming back. The other son who was given everything that he was set to inherit. So now when he comes back, everything that's left belongs to his older brother. That's his older brother's fatted calf. And yet the older brother doesn't see it that way. Because he says to his father, but you never even gave me a goat so I could celebrate with my friends. Dude, it's your goat. <laughs> Don't you see? Your father gave everything that belonged to the younger son to him already. By the rules of inheritance, it's your goat. Go celebrate. <laughs> but those aren't the terms he's seeing things in. He's seeing things in the terms of here, I've been working for you like a slave. I obeyed all of your commandments, and this one went out and never obeyed any of your commandments. Let me ask you this. Is being a child of your parents, are, are you any less their child when you don't obey their commands? Are you any less their child when you don't go out and work? Are you any less their child when your life doesn't go the way they expected it to? Of course not. Because here's the thing. Nothing you do in this world makes you any less family. Nothing you do in this world is going to reduce your value in the eyes of your parents. And think of it this way. Is there anything your children can do that will make them less valuable in your eyes? This 
is what Jesus is telling us. This is how God sees us. Yes, we can obey every commandment. Yes, we can work like a slave. But that's not what our value is based on. Our value doesn't come from anything that we do. It comes from the fact that we are God's children. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and everything that belongs to me is yours. It was appropriate to celebrate and be glad, for your brother was dead and is now alive. He was lost and is found. The most important thing is that we come home. The most important thing is that we treat one another like family. And that means that we don't think, well, you know, rent's due this month. And not everyone in this congregation is pulling their weight. The most important thing is that you come back and that you participate. Because guess what? You're still family. Even if, like the poor widow in the temple, you have to, you only have two cents to give, you're still a child of God. And so, this being Father's Day, you know, I want to remind you that we are all worth exactly that. We are all children of God. We are all family because of that. I was thinking today I could either do a Juneteenth sermon or a Father's Day sermon. But I was thinking of this parable, and it really is the ant and the grasshopper, isn't it? Juneteenth was a holiday that was, it commemorates when the slaves were freed. Not the day that they were mandated to be freed, but the day that they were finally told they were free. Because here's the thing, if no one ever tells you you're free, it doesn't matter that someone far, far away wrote a law that says so. Just like this, if people are still treating you like an ant, it doesn't matter that you're actually a child of God. And so today I want you to remember that we all have that value. That God said, I sent my son to set you free. And when God saw that we were still treating each other as property, when God saw that, he, that we were still treating each other as if we weren't family, he sent his son to die for us. He sent preachers into the world. He sent his apostles to make sure that every corner of the world knows that this God that is setting us free is our father. And he loves each and every one of us as his children. That there's no commandment. There is no work that can set us apart from the love of God. Whether we live like the older brother who worked as a slave and obeyed every commandment, or like the younger brother who lived a wild lifestyle, it says in my Bible. <laughs> so long as we come home, our Father is waiting for us. That's the love of God that we can never be apart from. And that's the love that we need to radiate into this world. Amen? Amen. Amen.